Senior Docs. Hi, right, so thank you again all uh, for coming. I'm uh, Nicholas Kuna, Translator Americas and uh, Technical Manager. Um, so with me today, we have uh, Serafil uh, Rodriguez, uh, who's going to uh, lead this um, webinar. Um, so today's topic is Mastering Results Analysis. So as you can see already in the first slide, uh, we're going to talk about you know, analysis tools, so some customization, reporting, and uh, some other communication tools we have in uh, Forge. Uh, so thank you also. We have received some new ideas uh, for uh, the next webinar. So some are actually going to be addressed already in this webinar. And uh, others, we will include them in the next webinar. So again, we're trying to make it a weekly thing. I think for quite some time, where this uh, you know um, uh, blocking coffee uh, is going on. Um, so uh, just stay tuned. Um, and uh, we usually email uh, the webinar announcement on Wednesdays. Um, with the link uh, to connect for the Friday. Okay, so we'll keep this kind of thing just to be working for them, for all of you. And if you have any uh, feedback on that, please email us. Uh, so actually, uh, we have a better idea. Um, all right, so just last point before we start. Um, we want so this webinar to be interactive, so please do not hesitate to use the chat feature uh, to ask your questions since we have muted everybody. Uh, I will monitor the questions and answer on the go. Okay. Uh, now it's time for Sarah Chu, a technical support engineer, to lead this webinar. Uh, Joe, please go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Hope everybody's staying safe uh, these days. Um, we're going to review all the analysis tools we have in the interface. Um, I'm going to review all the basic ones, and also I I'm going to show all the new features applied. So this webinar is going to be interesting for um, everybody, all levels. So um, here I have a quick uh, summary of what I'm going to uh, show. First, I'm going to review the first analysis tools, the basic analysis tools. Then I'll get into customization of the uh, interface and also of the results too. Then we're going to review how to create automatic reports and how to customize them to uh, our needs. And then we're going to talk about all the export options in the, what we call communication section. Um, so I'm going to go directly to Forge and I'm going to start showing everything in a live demonstration. Um, I'm going to use the Spindle tutorial so everybody has a, a reference in case they want to uh, try what we're going to do here by themselves. Um, yep, so first let's talk about, well, of course you have the, all the results here. There's going to be the first tool you use in the analysis. Uh, just with a double click, you load all the default results. Um, what I'm going to start with are the sensors. Um, all the tools I'm going to show can be used after you get the results. It's not necessary to rerun the simulation to use these tools. That's important. Um, so um, let's say we want to add a group of sensors in the core of the billet. I'm just going to add group, and then automatically you'll see we can import the sensors directly in the billet. We can customize the coordinates directly here. And once you have finished creating your group, you just have to click in compute. I'm going to show you one I have created before with just a lot of sensors in the core. And this has two applications. First, we'll be able to track the point in time, and the second option is to add a sensor plot. This is really useful because it will save us some time. It will create a plot showing, in this case, all the temperatures 
in the different points. We have one line per sensor we have created. We can, of course, modify the results in the curve settings, but this will save us a lot of time uh, because we don't have to import each curve individually. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to show the grain flow. As you know, the grain flow is a tool to track and points in the part. It's a visualization tool, so we won't be modifying the results at all when we add it. So here I have add some of them. To visualize them, I'm going to make the setup transparent. And this is the first example of mark, marking grid. As you see, it's a group of fibers we add to the part, and it's going to be the main tool we use to track the grain flow of the part. It starts as a 2D surface, and we can see as the part deforms, it becomes a 3D surface that we can export later and import in another simulation. It will tell us how the material is flowing in our part, and it's a, it's a really important analysis tool. If you want to add uh, a marking grid, once you are in the post-processor, remember we are uh, dealing with the analysis mode now. You can go to the Objects tab on the right by default and add a marking grid. Okay. You will add an object there. And here on the left, you'll have the different options. It can be grain flow fibers. This is the example I just showed. It can be plain layers, cylindric networks, or under skin layers. I have three, I have here three different examples. The first one was the grain flow. Now I'm going to show you the plane. So as we can see, the planes will tell us how the Grain flow is affecting the part, but just with a different uh, view. Okay? It's a different way to tackle the same issue. Finally, the under skin. This is just a surface that we have created. I have imported the billet and I have a scale it a little to create a under skin object. It's an empty shell, it's a surface. And this is going to let us, it's going to allow us to detect some defects that are initiated in the under skin of the part. Um, this is a good example because we have several. For example, here we see that this grain and this type of marking grid will let us detect a defect stuck in there. This is the technique you want to use for piping defects. That's the main use. Here we have another example. Okay. Um, to create them again, use the Objects tab. Once that's created, um, just use one of these. If you have issues, uh, email the support and we will help you, but they are uh, pretty easy to use. Now, next thing, next tool we're going to review, I'm going to hide the marking grid and go back to the standard view. Next tool uh, is going to be the ISO volumes. It's a really useful tool. It's to access it, we have to go to the insert tab, ISO volume. 
if you want to uh, activate or deactivate your ISO volumes, you have to go to the viewer objects. It's the same tab we use for the cutting planes. Okay, now in the ISO volume, uh, we'll see we create a tab on top once we create it. First, we're gonna choose a compute result. For example, let's say I want to detect the areas in my part that are surpassing 1100 degrees because, uh, well, no, let's do the opposite. Let's say I'm worried about these range of temperatures um, because my defects are starting there when the part cools off in that area. Using the ISO volume, I'm going to be able to isolate the elements that fulfill this uh, condition. All the elements that are between 600 and 1000 degrees are here. Now, once we have isolated the geometry, we can show a different result in here. For example, uh, this might not make a lot of sense, but I can show the strain in that area. Um, and this is a, a really good way to isolate parts of our model that we are worried about. We have the option to export the STL in case we want to further analyze it in our CAD software or any other software after this. Um, yeah, this is pretty much all. We can also map vectors on it in case we want to show how that area is moving. Um, yep, yeah. again, it's a visualization tool. It's not going to affect the results. It's just a way to isolate the areas in the part that fulfill a range of values for a result. Okay, now, um, most users are aware of the false result. Uh, it's used to show the faults we have in our model. That would mean material folding into the part, um, forming an uh, angle more higher than 170 degrees. That's considered a fault. What not a lot of people know is that we have a fold tab here that it's used to track the folds over time. How this works, uh, let's go to the folds tab. If we click show folds, it will make the part transparent. And what this is going to do is create a pink dot whenever we get a fold in our part. This is important because due to the remeshing for finite element analysis, sometimes we remesh here and the fold disappears. Uh, that's just how the finite element analysis works. Uh, thanks to this option, the folds tab, we will be able to track them over time. So even if these folds disappear, I will be seeing the pink dot there. Okay. Quite, and <clears throat> quite important for some uh, cases where the faults disappear due to remessing effects. Okay, uh, those tools have been there for a while, but now I'm going to show something new that has been introduced in the last uh, update. It's called the advanced plot. And it's this new section here on the bottom left, advanced plot. Clicking there, we'll be seeing all the plots we have available in our simulation. Um, it will allow us to combine different columns and make basic arithmetic operations with them. Um, in this case, I have symmetries in my model. So for example, if I want to show the total tonnage of my simulation, the result I'm getting here it's going to be uh, one sixth of the total tonnage. So if I want to visualize the total tonnage, the advanced plot is the way to go. I'm going to go to the upper die on the bottom here. Um, I'm going to remove all the default um, 
columns with the remove option. And I'm going to add in the upper die the columns I'm interested in. In this case, I want to show the time in the X axis, and I want to show the force in the C axis. Now I'm going to add a new column to show the force in the C axis multiplied by six. So I get the total tonnage. New uh, here, uh, we can specify the variable type. It's tonnage, name, we can call it total tonnage. Uh, unit, uh, tons, and default value zero. Now, in the new column created, what we are going to do is enter the operation for the previous column. In this case, it's column B. So C is equal to six times B. Now you can see on the right that the result has been updated. Um, I'm going to select the columns now, uh, column A and column C, and I'm going to click Save Select. Let's give this VTF a name, total tonnage per die, for example. Save. We will get a confirmation message, and we can close it now. Now, when we go to Insert um, Plot, we will have a new, I'm going to make it kind of bigger. We will have a new source here. Um, yeah. It's going to have the same name, or total tonnage upper die in this case, and we will have the results that we have added in the columns section. We can see the total tonnage here. A really useful tool when we have symmetries, especially. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on, we have to show a lot of things, so um, I have to move to the next. We're going to talk about customization now. Um, first, I'm going to, I want to talk about the Windows option. When we want to show several results in the same window, we can, uh, for example, show temperature, strain, I'm going to show pressure to, or misses stress. And here we can have an initial view for the temperature, for example. Sometimes we create really, uh, first this is done with the Windows uh, tab, and we can add as many windows as we have. Sometimes we create really complex uh, views of our results, and when we close the interface, as you know, we will lose all this information. In the last update, we have added the workspace saving option. So if we go to the home section on the top left, we'll see that now we have the open workspace and save workspace. This is going to save the view I have for the results, uh, and it's going to be related with this simulation. It's independent for simulations. We cannot use it in a different simulation, unless it has the same name for all the objects and for the simulation itself. Uh, I'm going to save uh, the workspace. I have to save the simulation first. Save workspace. Um, and now if I close my simulation, and open it again. As you see, I only have one window, and I have lost all the all the work I've done to visualize all the results I'm interested in. But if we go to the open workspace, and we go to the simulation and the location where we stored the file, with a double click, it will automatically load everything exactly in the same way as we had it before. It's a really useful tool when we want to prepare results 
to show to a customer and we won't we don't want to do spend 10 15 minutes preparing everything you can just prepare the work and the workspace and send it it's a really small file and as long as you have the result files you should be able to visualize it okay uh, something important in the home tab i want to emphasize it's the settings options most people know that it, this is used to change the unit for our templates, but there's also more options that not a lot of many people use. For example, we can select the computations folder and geometries folder. Every time we click in open, we will be taken to this folder by default. So we will save a lot of clicks if we use our designated simulation folder here. Same thing for the geometry. Every time you try to load a geometry in Forge, it will take you to this folder. So I recommend everybody to set up a dedicated folder for this to save time when preparing your simulation. Another important thing in view options is to keep activated the automatic setting of rotation point. If this is not activated, by default, you will be using the origin of coordinates to rotate your model or the point that has been set in the simulation for rotations. Uh, with the automatic on, you will rotate using the current point where your cursor is to rotate. Also, here I recommend to activate the orthographic projection. If we use the perspective projection, by default, we'll be seeing, uh, let's go back to one window. By default, we will have the perspective view activated, which can be a little confusing sometimes. Um, and most, most engineers prefer to have the orthographic projection. By default, is the perspective projection. So if you want to change it, please uh, go to settings, default camera options. Also, in view appearance, you could change the customer logo if you need it. Uh, by default, we have the first valor logo there, but you could. Uh, enter the logo of your company to customize your interface. Also, a lot of colors on it. Uh, okay, so going back to the interface, next thing I'm going to mention is the automatic reports. Going to the export section, we'll see. Close all the parts. And all the extra windows. Okay, export, create report. This feature will allow us to create a PowerPoint, adding the main results for our model. We can also add, for example, I'm going to add the tonnage here and the energy, for example. And then you can. There's a lot of customizing options. Um, let's keep it like this for this example. I'm going to save this, the report here. Generate report. All right. So just clicking in the generate report, we will get a general view of the simulation, all the information about it. Uh, there's a lot of information here that you can review with time. And we will get um, initial and final state for all the results by default. Um, here we can see all the results I have selected and all the plots I have added there. It's a really quick way to export results. It's just one click and we will get a complete report of, for our part. We can prepare the model further, adding symmetries, for example, uh, finding the right view. There are many things we can do to customize our PowerPoint. And in case you want to modify the template we use, 
when we click in the report, we will be using this automatic template. In case you want to customize this to your company needs, you have to go to the following folder. Uh, this is going to be recorded and sent to everybody. Folder, resources, NXT UI, reports, English. Here you have the template that we are using. Um, you can modify uh, several things here. And I don't have the time to get into details. You can change the logo, colors, uh, a lot of things. Okay. Just modifying the default template available uh, there. Okay. Now, last, I'm going to talk about the different options we have in the export tab. I want to start with the BTFX. Uh, BTFX are a way to export what we visualize in the interface. It's a way to export this information, but uh, without having Forge. This means your uh, customers will be able to open the model without having Forge installed on their computers. One click share is the future of this. Um, it will create a model. I'm going to use a LiDAR simulation. This is the signal. So let's say I want to export this model, create a quick animation, export one click share. This will upload my simulation in the cloud um, and will give me a link to open it, okay? This requires a process of creating a free account. It takes a couple of minutes. First time you try to use it, you will uh, be requested to do this and you will see some instructions. Once it's done, it will be uploaded to um, Transvalor Cloud. Here you'll have to enter your credentials and you will be able to access all your models here. Uh, you can see the one I uploaded. Uh, let's open just one of them to quickly show how this looks. Just copying and pasting the link we received. You can see it here. We will be able to interact the, with this in our browser. And we'll have the same uh, tools that we have in Forge, okay? Uh, we can add several results. and You can do all the visualization things you can do in Forge. Really quick way to share. Here we have a limit of 15 megabytes. I have six models and I'm using 50%. If you want to expand this, this usage, you need to pay a, a small fee per month but there's plenty of free space to share these models. For example, a good application of this could be importing this in your website. For example, this is our website, transvalorusa.com, and you can see some examples for our models. Um, that's day one. So a good way to show some of your uh, more advanced parts in your website and step up the uh, visualization here. Um, yeah. Also, if you don't want to get your models in the cloud, there's another option to just export the file as a BTFX. It's going to be the same thing, but instead of loading it in the... Instead of loading it in the cloud, you will be able to load it in the free viewer that we provide with the software. I'm going to show you what it is. Again, it's in the default installation folder, uh, being Windows 64, I know. The viewer is called Citron 3D Viewer. It's a small uh, file. If you want to share it with your customers, if you want to share a BTFX file with them, you will have to send them the Citron 3D Viewer and all the QT DLL. Um, we have prepared a file with all the files uh, needed for this in our website as well. Uh, 
it's here. Uh, it's in the member section, Forge How To. If you are not a member, uh, I would rec ha highly recommend to become one. We have a lot of videos and information, uh, a lot of tutorials here to complete the only we have available in Forge by default. And it takes uh, two minutes to become a member. There's, it's really easy. In the tools section, if you scroll down, you will see the 3D free viewer. You can download all the files there. And once you have exported your file, the BTFX, you just have to paste it or drop it in the model and you will be able to review it. You can have as many as you want and add several results. Again, this is the best way to share a model if we want the customer to interact with and they don't have Forge installed. Okay. Uh, other than that, in the export section, we can export um, pictures. Clicking copy will copy a picture of your model in your clipboard. It's a good way to create your own reports fast. To export a video, first you have to create an animation. Um, yeah, I'm going to use the setting a lot faster. We will have video available once that's done. If you want to export the BTFX as a video, you have to create an animation first. Otherwise, it will be a single uh, increment. If you want to export all the increments, first prepare an animation, then export it as a BTFX. Then in the plot section, we can use copy or image, same way we use for pictures, or in case we want to import in Excel later, we can export it as CSV or as text. Both of them are really easy to import in Excel. Uh, also, in case you don't know, we can export geometries at any increment. If we want to export the billet, we can do it as a dot main if we want to include all the results. As an STL to export just the geometry information. And, and also as UMV. This is a universal file. Um, it contains all the information about the nodes, position, and the results in a text file. This is what you want to use in case you want to import the results in a different software. Um, and yeah, with this, we, we've been, it's been 30 minutes. That's all I wanted to show. So thank you everybody for your attention. Um, yeah, we'll keep, we have added most of the, and uh, solicitations we got for you, from you. So thank you very much for all the feedback. Um, we'll keep trying to add as many topics as we can and we will cover them all eventually. Please keep the feedback coming. Um, yep, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Um, so again, thank you all for being here with, uh, this morning. I hope you we'll, uh, enjoy the webinar. Uh, you learn, um, you know, at least several things about the uh, um, how to uh, look at your results and uh, analyze your uh, path and also customization of your environment. Um, so we have recorded this webinar. Uh, it will be available uh, in our member area. So another reason why to uh, register as a member is free for uh, up-to-date or under maintenance uh, customers. Okay. Um, so if you're not signed up, as uh, Sergio said, just go to TravelerUSA.com and click on Members and sign up, okay? And, and then we'll uh, accept uh, your request uh, shortly after. All right, so we will uh, communicate when the video is available, all right? Probably an email on Monday. Um, our next webinar uh, will be uh, next Friday, same time. We'll uh, send out the email on Wednesday. Uh, we will uh, decide uh, what topics we are uh, going to for uh, this. Okay. And um, 
that's it for today. Thank you very much. You all have uh, a good weekend and you'll uh, stay safe. All right. Thank you very much.